into into the rest of the deck. So you're going to cut into a third game here, as it looks like Jeff is actually on the god draw. To be too fair, it has to be far seek plus third land in your hand. Sure. If it's just far seek and two lands, it's not a god draw anymore. Sure. Well, Jeff is trying to put together the god draw right now. He does have a far seek, right. and we see Woodrow does not have a creature in play. So what is going on here? Yeah. Remember, Jeff, interestingly enough, uh, every match so far in the top eight has gone according to seed. The one through four seeds winning Aaron Barich, the two seed in the finals. And remember, Jeff Mitchum, the overall one seed. Yeah, so it's all been shock. Both um, players kept six cards, and Woodrow does just not have a creature, it looks like. I mean, Hexproof may have to do that. Say he has, if you have, you know, your complete aura suite, do you keep it with no creature? I mean, it's a risk, but I think it's probably a risk you have to take. Probably better than five cards. Yeah. I mean, your deck is all about, you know, there are three pieces. There's, there, you know, lands, creatures, auras. And if you have two of those, okay, that's probably good enough. And then, then you know, you haven't, you know what you need to draw. To be fair, though, one Liliana kind of wrecks him here. Yeah. That's okay, Liliana's not actually a card, that's is an, it? That's an understatement, honestly. I mean, he only has three post-board, so if he, Mitchum's on a, I mean, if I'm, if I'm Bugatsky, I'm actually thinking like this. Uh, you know, Mitchum only has three Lilianas. Maybe he doesn't have one in his hand. Sure. Probably doesn't have one in his hand. We'll go for it. You know, you'd say like, so when I math things out, what I'd say is, you know, something on the lines of Mitchum with a three card in his hand is, some, with three gift cards, this card in his deck is probably only about 30% to have it in his opener. And I'm about 80% to hit a creature in the first four turns, you know. So then I'd say like, all right, this is like uh, a 70 and an 80. So about 56% of the time I win. Hey, that's pretty good for a multi six. Sweet, I'll take it. You know what? I believe your math. I bet you're right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a math teacher. I mean, like I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the hard thing is like those numbers there, I'm making them up based sure. on feel. So if sure. my feel is off on a number, then my conclusion's wrong. Sure. We see a Voice of Resurgence suited up with Ethereal Armor, suited up with a Rancor. That thing's going to be a 2, 3, 4, 6, 4. We're going to see a Rakdos Kiru getting aggressive. Well, he has to kill him somehow. What he does have here, it looks as he has a Nighthawk and it's a pair of... A pillar and a bonfire, or is yeah. a pair of bonfires? He drew pillar for the turn. I actually love this attack because it's inducing. Like if he, if he blocks, actually, it's ruined. But now we're just going to tonight have post combat. All right. So the the voice of resurgence is all the way up to a six four first strike. Yeah. Trample. Giddy up. It's a pretty trampling first strike crawl worm. Soon to be bigger, probably. Soon to be like a flying eight six million lifelink. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Liliana me. <laughs> yeah. Please, please no Lilianas. The old finger crossing. I mean, I, I love the I love the style deck. Uh, it's it's really I mean I love it in the sense I think it's hilarious. I you know if you you obviously are a big fan of modern you know in modern it gets even more absurd. You're striking cards like Daybreak Coronet, which actually just have a million abilities on them. Yeah, I actually love that. I, I actually love that deck, the Slippery Bongo deck. It, it's not. I, I shouldn't love that. For deck, those who don't I know do. Coronet, what is it? It's a three mana card that gives you. It is a. It is white white. White white yeah. for for plus three plus three first strike life link trample. Or uh, is it first strike life link. That's it's it's first strike life link trample, and I think that's the only other ability. But you can but only you, enchant it if it's already enchanted. Right. So you know, you can only go all in with it. You got. You have to be willing to put two auras on one creature to play this card. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna make your move, you might as well make it make it all in. Yeah. And that's what I think we're going to see here. Okay, we're actually going to see Stranger guys. So a and little bit of that's some insurance right there. Yeah, that's some protection. Yeah, first strike's Vigilance Lifelink. Right, it can't be Trample, it's white. White doesn't oh, sure, give Trample. sure, sure. White gives Vigilance. Not yet, white doesn't give Trample. So, with white gives Vigilance, yeah, so the creature actually becomes like this giant wall that just smashes yeah. you. And because of that creature, I think Bogutsky's in the clear, actually. Well, he just, no, he has Pillar of Flame in his hand. We know okay, that Mitchum so has so Pillar so of Flame. Okay, so we can go Pillar of Flame, right. So we can go Pillar, Liliana. Yes. I don't think he has a Liliana. He doesn't have I Liliana think we would have yet. seen it. Yeah, he has his hand right now is Pillar of Flame, and he has Actually, a Bonfire of the Damned. So Bonfire, how many lands is he on? He needs too many lands. Bonfire's not going to happen, yeah. right? He okay. could Mizium Mortars. Nope, now the Voice of Resurgence is out of Mizium Mortars range. Remember, that, thing is huge. that armor pumps both armors, so now it is getting plus 8, plus 6 in Trample. It is a 10H Trample first strike. It's a mighty deer. It's a completely unblockable card. We got one more? Sure, sure. All in. All of them. Throw them all on there. And that's another Ethereal Armor he's putting on the Strangle Root Geist. Who's going to give that guy first strike? That thing's huge, too. Would you prefer to be on the Geist, or would you want it on the Voice all right, of Resurgence? All right, so the Voice of Resurgence currently is a 10 8, and that next Ethereal Armor would give you plus 6, so it would make it a 16. Um, doesn't matter. <laughs> they're, bo they're both absurd. I think I think I like putting on the the Geist because now it can't be pillared, right? Maybe yeah, no, I guess it, I guess it can be chump blocked, which is yeah. pretty bad. You don't get the extra damage in. Maybe because so the Voice of Resurgence right now is a 12, 10 first striker. You want to make sure that the Voice is lethal in two swings, no matter what. So as long as you have enough power on it that it's lethal in two swings, then I like putting the armor on the Geist. Uh, 12, meaning, so the, for it not to be two swings, Mitchum's going to have to chump block with five toughness worth of chump blockers. 
which he only has four right now. Sure. So you haven't actually lost a turn right now, but you might lose one to Mitchum's top deck. Okay. And I don't want to lose the extra turn, so if I think I'm in danger of losing the extra turn, I'll put it all on the voids. All right, well, we see the chump block there from the Nighthawk, but Trample's going to get some damage across here. So after the dust settles, we'll have an update on life totals for you. Sure, I don't think Mitchum's racing this. I think he has to answer it. I'm not sure how he's supposed to answer it. No, he's not racing this, I promise. That's, that's not a thing that's going to happen here. I mean, we did just play, you know, a card that gives two auras that each give, like, plus four, plus four... One of them gave it was a plus five plus five and a plus four plus four. Or mm. each of them cost one mana. Yeah. Because you know that's that's completely reasonable. <laughs> so you see both players figuring out life totals and how big are these guys and looks like they're gonna figure it out. I hope. I guess you know we're gonna see how much trample damage is again. The voice of resurgence right now is a two. It's a twelve ten. It is a twelve ten. Twelve minus three is so nine. nine. So nine ten and eleven. Six. Yeah. 10, so it should be swinging for 15. twelve. Wait, no, 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 not 12, sorry, 9 plus 15, 15 total, sorry. Uh, yeah, the 9 was already including the blood block. Uh, Vampire has lifelink, that doesn't matter, they have first strike. Yep. So the, the, it's just a chump blocker, and there's the pass of the turn. There's actually, so does Mitchum play like a dread board here? Uh, he's no. not, Wood, so Woodrow Bugutsky, the first upset in the top eight, well, upset by seeding, but probably not by matchup, he will move on to the finals against Aaron Barrett. Definitely not by matchup, that's the deck he wants to play against every round if he had a choice. He wants to play against John, and he probably wants to play against Junk, too. Uh, this is a great place for Van Hexproof to be, and he's going to be playing against Aaron Barrett, and again, Aaron Barrett's playing the Naya Aggro deck, so... We're moving right along here, and we're going to the finals now, my friends. Again, another fantastic weekend from Jeff Mitchum, but it's a it, it's a very difficult matchup for him to win. It really is. Yeah, we've seen that Bogutski winning twice. Both times, actually, though, he it took him to game three, both times defeating Jun. Mm -hmm. So it's not to say that, you know, it's not an unwinnable matchup. Jun does have some interaction. It's just on the wrong side of it. Yeah. And, you know, it, it really just feels like for Jun to win, they have to steal two games, and the first one's very, very hard to steal, and you have to dedicate a healthy amount of sideboard cards to actually win the second and third game. And any matchup that you're walking into where you know you're down,